Hey, hello, this is John McEntee here for the Rock Fantasy Files, and we're here with Trey from Creeping Death, and want to welcome you to, you to the show, and I uh, want to say that the um, new EP that you guys just did, I've really been digging on it lately. Um, you know, since Liz sent it to me, it just um, it just caught my ear, you know, it was one of those things, I just heard it, it just sounded fucking killer, so um I don't know. Why don't you just uh, introduce yourself and then kind of just tell us something about this um, new release that you have? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much. That means the world coming from you, especially. Um, so uh, I'm Trey. I play guitar in Creeping Death. Um, we started in uh, the year 2015 in uh, Denton, Texas. Um, I was in college at the time. It was really just like a, a fun thing to do you know, with your, your friends. We were all hardcore kids. We just kind of wanted to play, you know, something more metallic. Uh, so, and we could all really just kind of started to really dive into death metal. So that's kind of what we were trending to. And then, you know, I kind of um, got better at playing guitar because I originally was actually a drummer. Uh, so when I first started this band, I had only been playing guitar for about two years. So um, basically the whole progression of the band, I've just been kind of like getting better, at guitar, feeling more comfortable with it. And now I, I guess you could say I'm a legit guitarist now from just being, you know, a drummer. So that's kind of like how we started. Uh, we got signed uh, in 2018. Um, we kind of were always, uh, I mean, still is like, we, we do this really for, for fun first and foremost. Uh, but like, you know, I was in college, we all had full-time jobs. Uh, but when we got that, that offer, we were like, hey, like, uh, you know, if we're going to do it, like, let's do it for for real. And the timing was good. I had just graduated. Uh, everyone was just kind of like in a position to like take that leap with me. So uh, it was sick. So now I got like badass bandmates and we're rocking across the country. So it's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, excuse my ignorance, but what what label are you guys signed to? Um, They OK, I, now it's called I, Monarch Heavy. But it was called E1 before. Yeah, that's I seen E1, but I, I mean, I'm I must be out of the loop. But I don't know what E1 is as far as a label goes. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they like uh, they dabble with like a lot of different stuff, not just like metal, but like uh, rap and pop too. Um, like huh. we're label mates with Probar um, as well, um, and um, pretty sure Exodus is on that label now. Oh, okay. Um, so there's there's some metal ties, but there's also uh, they also own the rights to Death Row Records, and they also have bands like the Lumineers and you know stuff like that. So they kind of like uh, were really just like a, a sort of big kind of conglomerate type label, I guess. Yeah, it seems like it's kind of all over the place, but mm -hmm. I guess it, it kind of um, you know you guys probably stand out on that, which is actually a, could be a good thing, you know so um, yeah for sure yeah oh go ahead no no i was i was just um what was i gonna say i of course i lost my train of thought um oh, i'm sorry <laughs> no no it's all good um so basically um i mean as far as myself goes like i said um uh, the edge of existence ep i think it just to me it just sounds i don't know it just sounds killer it sounds it just sounds real, um, has a real traditional death metal vibe to it, but there's, there's lots of bands doing traditional death metal. So, but something about it just sounded a little different, maybe a little more authentic mm -hmm. or something like that. It, I mean, do you guys feel like say, cause I've heard the, um, album that you did before was it the wretched illusions. Yeah. Um, wretched illusions. Yeah. That. I mean, I heard it and I thought it was good, but it didn't like blow me away. It was just like, okay, it's a good band. You know, these guys are, these guys are cool. Cause I think we were um, actually with my band, we were supposed to play with you at, uh, was it terror fest or something? So I seen you guys were there uh -huh. I was like, Oh, let me check it out. And like I said, I thought it was good, but it didn't really blow my mind as far as like, you know, oh, this is really something special, but this one just definitely has more of a, a special vibe to it. I don't know if, if you, um, you know, agree with that but it just sounds more like honest i guess well what's your opinion yeah. uh i just think this time around uh well one uh we 
we're all actually like in the middle of a tour cycle with Fresh Illusions when everything like shut down. So we had nothing in the bank. So we pretty much just started from scratch. And that's kind of like where the EP and the consequent, uh, co like the upcoming LP, uh, all of that was written in the same session with, as the EP. So uh, I, I think it was just kind of bored, born out of uh, one, like uh, it was the only sort of fun thing to do at the time, get together and jam. So we had more time to sort of like, I don't know, experiment with like uh, guitar pedals and this and that and sort of play around. And uh, with Wretched Illusions, we pretty much uh, got like uh, signed and then uh, we needed an LP or we were planning on putting out an LP, um, but we wanted to do it like, I wouldn't say we like rushed it or anything, uh, but we pretty much just wrote it over the, like a, a few months span and then just like recorded it over a few months span in between tours. Uh, this time I would say this whole writing session was like obviously longer because nobody could play shows or tour <laughs> or do anything. So we were yeah. able to just kind of like, you know, hang out and jam and, you know, sort of think about the songwriting pieces and, and stuff like that. And um, we also added a, a new guitar player, uh, AJ, uh, you know, um, I, I would say I'm still like the primary writer, but I, I'm, I like to collaborate in everything. Uh, it never starts out the same way. Um, like if I bring something to the table, sometimes it'll stay that way uh, on like the recording, but most of the time it's like, we'll do this and somebody will be like, hey, you should flip this or, do it this way and let's add this to it and yada 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 and so forth so that's kind of like how our whole writing structure always is so when you add somebody with a new flavor and sort of new tastes and stuff like that you know it always kind of like comes out a little bit different you know we're, we're always like uh, it's obviously like old school death metal but we we don't want to get like bored and play the same like songs over and over so we're gonna just try to tinker and do things that may not be like revolutionary to like the world of music but it's stuff that we've never done as a band you know i've never used guitar pedals in the middle of a song switching it on and off like that's boring to me so you know you just continue to try to add little wrinkles and things like that that are new to us and you know that's try to how we that's how we try to keep it fresh because uh, we want to keep it fresh for ourselves first and foremost we're we're kind of like assholes in that regard is that like we just kind of like write the music that like we like, like it's fun to play for us and we like listening to it. So it's just like, that's usually good enough for us. So that's kind of like how we look at it. So uh, if it's like fun, like, like I said, you know, I don't want to be writing the same stuff over and over. So I want to add little things here and there to try to like make it fun and switch it up. Yeah. Well, the bottom line is, is in my opinion, at least, the best music comes from being honest with yourself, not trying to say fit in with a trend or try to follow, you know, be a trend, a trend follower to me, you know, most, most bands that do that, I just don't, it just, it comes across in the music and you just feel the, um, you feel that it just isn't sincere. You know, when you're doing it, cause you like, you like it, you honestly believe in it. I just think it's, I think it's, um, I think it comes across, you know, I mean, I think of my many years of listening to death metal, I can kind of tell when a band's really being honest or when they're just kind of being, you know, bandwagon jumpers or just doing it for the money. Cause I mean, there's lots of bands that I hear that, um, you know, even bands that I, I like, and I sometimes hear their new album, I'm just like, Hmm, I don't know. It's like, it's okay, yeah. but mm -hmm. it seems like just dialing it in or something, you know, like I want to, I want to mm -hmm. feel that sense of passion and urgency with it, you know? So I mean, that, that yeah. was, like I said, that was the vibe I got. I mean, I was just listening to the album again. Um, I mean, the EP again, and I was definitely really impressed. I mean, do you, uh, are you have, do you have plans, I guess, to do an album, a full album in the near future? And will it kind of be in this ballpark ish should expand on it? Or what are you thinking? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely expand on it. I think, um, yeah, we, this whole, like I said, like, uh, this whole pandemic writing session, I want to say we wrote, we've written, I don't know, almost 15 songs at this point. So yeah. uh, we're trying to um, get in the studio hopefully in January and um, take a couple of weeks to record that and hopefully have it out uh, next year. If as long as the um, you know the the vinyl shortage and 
all the snap foods yeah. and, the, and the supply chain, you know, um, all it's those things up. are obviously like out of our control, but our goal is to have it out next year. We didn't want to wait too long, um, you know, after just, you know, on this, just EP, uh, especially when the, we were so happy with like the writing sessions is kind of where it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, I, I mean, it definitely was a good idea to do an EP now because I mean, it was nice I mean, for me. It was a, you know nice to hear some new stuff that just kind of, you know, kind of kicked my ass as far as like, you know, you hear it and you're just like, fuck yeah, this is, you know, awesome or whatever. I know a lot of people say that you guys, or maybe even you guys say it's kind of like a, have a hardcore influence. And I, I guess a little bit, you know, you can hear a little bit of that influence, but it doesn't, it seems like it's, it meshes perfectly with kind of the old school uh, death metal vibe, because in my opinion, a lot of the, you know, older bands, like, you know, say my generation, um, you know, we were influenced by a lot of punk and a lot of hardcore, um, you know, and of course, extreme stuff like, you know, the extreme metal stuff, like say the Sodom and creators and, um, you know, then death metal, you know, early death metal bands like death or whatnot. So, um, I don't think, I, I think it's a natural thing as long as it doesn't come across as sounding forced, like too many bands, they try to mix these, uh, styles together, but it's, to me, it just sounds fragmented and I'm just not into that. I like songs that just flow good because at the end of the day it doesn't fucking matter nothing if this, unless the song is just entertaining to listen to you just want to listen to it and be like i like this song i don't give a crap that about the talent show i don't give a crap about you know really even what it is so much it's as long as you listen to it you're like i'm digging it you know and that that's kind of the vibe i got on this you know but um you know of course i i really don't know a lot about the band so for me to, um, you know, project my agenda on you is not really. <laughs> no, no worries. No, I, I, I get what you're saying. For, no, I totally get what you're saying. I would say, um, like, we are all, like, definitely, like, hardcore kids in the sense that we came up in the hardcore scene. That's how we all met each other. That's still, we play in hardcore bands. Um, and, you know, we still are involved in our hardcore scene here, really. But, like, Obviously, sonically, it's obviously like death metal. I would say we do take influences from some, like, I would say we, we're influenced by bands like Iron Age and, and Tower Trip and, and Mammoth Grinder as well, um, which I guess you, you could put them in more of the hardcore realm, but especially with Mammoth Grinder, they're definitely influenced by death metal as well. Um, but yeah, I would say it's more of a, like, a, a, not like an ethos, like it, like it's sort of an energy to it. Uh, that's kind of where our the hardcore sense comes from. Uh, like, we don't try to, I don't know, like complicate things. You know what I mean? We just try to like, we know what we are, and we come to do what we do. And like, you know, I guess it's straightforward. But you know, that's we're not here for like the. I guess I don't want to use gimmicks, but. Um, you know, we are, it's just kind of like me as a person. It's just like, what you see is what you get. It's like, that's, you know, we're, we're here to be up front um, and just in your face and, and metal. And uh, that's kind of like where the punk aspect comes from, I think. Because um, we'll, we'll play anywhere, anytime to anyone, you know. We'll play, you know, basement. We, we came up playing hardcore shows and basement floors and, you know, disgusting places. And so, you know, that's yeah. just like, that's just part of our, I, I feel like our band DNA. And I feel like it will always kind of be part of the way we like operate and kind of like not just write our structure, our music, but just kind of like the way we go about ourselves as a band as well. That's cool. And as far as touring goes, uh, you know, tell us what you got coming up touring wise and um, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, so we got a tour coming up with uh, Exhumed, uh, Bewitcher and Enforced, which I'm extremely excited about uh that tour that tour package is insane yeah um, exhumed you know legends such a fun time we're playing with them on halloween in our hometown so <laughs> that that's gonna be amazing um enforced released one of my favorite albums this year uh kill grid so i'm excited to see them every night and bewitcher just 
ripped, you know. So I'm excited. It's, it's a good tour package, uh, diverse, and it's not just like the same type of thing four times in a row, you know. Yeah. A different vibe and got something for everybody. And it's uh, more importantly, it's all bands that are like energetic, like they all bring an energy. So I just think the whole show from beginning to end is going to be buzzing and same with the whole tour. So very excited about it. Yeah, no, it's definitely cool. I know we've done some stuff with Exhumed in the past and get along with those guys. Great. And they're just a um, really entertaining live band and i'm sure it'll be killer i'm not too familiar with the other bands on the on the bill but i'll have to check into them i do admit that i sometimes don't keep on top of the metal scene as much as i should these days but i just get so caught up with my own um, stuff you know but i'll definitely have to check them out but i don't think that tour is happening um in north carolina where i live now so i'm kind of bummed out about that but um, oh, ho- hopefully I get to check you guys out and, um, you know, exhumed, of course, I love to check out again, too. But um, yeah. so let me think. Um, I don't know. I guess I've noticed in Texas in general that there's a pretty good underground death metal scene over there these days. A lot of a lot of great bands coming out of there. Um I guess you've obviously being there, you've noticed it. It seems like a, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it might be, it could even be one of the best times in Texas death metal, as far as overall scene goes, which is really an awesome thing. Um, You know, tell us a little bit, I guess, about the, you know, the local scene or the Texas scene just for, you know, some people that might not be aware of it, you know? Yeah. Right now it's killer. Uh, I I would say uh, new bands are popping up all the time that are, are sick obviously right now frozen soul is absolutely killing the game uh, yeah they're they're kind of taking the metal world by storm right now but there's a lot of uh metal bands popping up out of, out of texas right now that are just absolutely awesome um like uh there's a new band called tribal gaze from east texas um really kind of slow dirty sort of like death metal um then you have bands like uh malignant altar from houston um you know you have bands like scourge from houston um then you have bands more on the black metal side like skeleton from from austin texas you know so you really just have a diverse group of bands coming from um all aspects of not just dfw but you know all all corners of texas even west texas there's a band called flesh rot um that's you know killing it right now as well you know they're from west texas and you know you would think there's nothing but oil fields out there but you know, they got risks too <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's it, it's really cool, it, you know. It, it's when geographically you're as isolated as you are in Texas, because people don't like to think about it as like, you know, geographically isolated because we have so many of the biggest cities in the country here. But we're 24 hours away from each coast, and everywhere in between isn't really as much of a media center per se as like say the Northeast or the SoCal or, or NorCal or the West Coast, you know. So we pretty much just have to play amongst ourselves. And, you know, like when you tour and play amongst yourselves, uh, you take influence from like, you know, your peers. And I think that's sort of why the Texas scene is sort of uh, on its own thing and like um, popping off a little bit because, you know, they're, they're, they're taking influences from other things, but they're also like taking influences from their peers as well, you know, propping up their peers and, you know, trying to just advance the, the whole scene. Because uh, I think right now, especially better than any time that I've been going to shows, that the bands understand that a rising tide raises all shit. So, like, if eyes are on a certain band, like, yeah, let's all push that band. And, and simultaneously, that band knows, like, yo, I'm going to put on for the homies as well. So, you know, it's just this ever, like, this cycle of, you know, bands putting on and helping up. Uh, other bands yeah. in the state so it's really it's cool. like a synergy that happens when yeah. one band does well it helps sh- shine light on other bands yeah i totally get that that totally happened in the early uh 90s when i was starting in bands and stuff like that or just like a uh just one band started doing good and then other bands started doing good and people started really paying attention everyone fed off it and it just it makes for such a um a fun and um inspiring um vibe you know yeah absolutely 
Um, okay, well, I guess getting close to the end, but is there, first of all, is there anything um, that you also want to just state about either the band or the, you know, album or something that we missed that's important? Because, um, you know, I miss things all the time because I'm very unprofessional doing this. I just, it's all, you know, I just rap kind of with the whole thing, you know? <laughs> um no i think we pretty much got it um i would say i i guess we uh one detail we dedicated the um uh, ep to our good friend riley gale and uh wade allison from iron age uh and power trip respectively um mm -hmm. they were kind of like the uh people in the scene that we look up to um they both passed away pretty close to each other um like last year and it was pretty rough for the all of all of texas whether it was hardcore punk death metal metal like you know those are bands that are influential influential to us all so uh you know we really uh wanted to dedicate it to um uh, dedicate it to them because you know they meant a lot to us so yeah okay well cool well uh, i guess thank you very much then for the interview i totally appreciate it i going to be ordering your album soon um probably on Bandcamp thank or you. something so um look for that and um yeah, everybody else should go and check out the new Creeping Death out, oh, EP, The Edge of Existence. It's really killer if you like old school kind of death metal. Very, I think it's kind of meat and potatoes, but also very interesting. I think it's worth giving it a listen. Um, you know, check them out on tour, of course, with Exhumed. That will be a rager for sure. And um, yeah, th thank you very much. And um, I guess we'll see you next time. And I just want to do my normal rant at the end where you should support underground record stores and support, you know, try, try not to buy from Amazon, Walmart and all those big stores if you can and support the little guy, you know, especially small record shops that are doing it for the love of metal or love of music and not for the cash because there's hard, probably no cash to be made in a record store these days. So uh, do that and also support the bands, buy stuff from the bands on their website. Of course, um, you know, check out Creeping Death. I know they have a Bandcamp page, Facebook. I'm sure, I'm sure all that stuff, Instagram. I, probably, I don't know. Do you have a regular website too? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I should know this. Um, <laughs> I think you can go to Creeping Death, uh, edge of, Creeping Death dash edge of existence dot com. That's what it is. Creeping death dash edge of existence dot com. It's got links to uh, pre orders or not pre order. It's out now. Links to order the <laughs> record, li just links to, to shows, links to all of our socials, the videos. So, yeah, that would be the uh, pertinent information there. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you. And I appreciate it and look forward to seeing you on tour. So, take care. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. Peace.